This is actually a corner terrace house at Sentosa Cove. The total built up area internally is roughly about 5,000 square feet, including the land, it's roughly about 6,002. I guess the way that we would describe the design is more of a contemporary vernacular that addresses the modern resort look that the client wants. Throughout the house, you realize that we do use a lot of different materials. We try to make sure that each of the different materials, in fact, complement each other very well. They will never ever clash and they will never overwhelm a space. So one of the key important things about our design is never just from an aesthetics point of view but it's always about the space. Because a house, if the space is, is not conducive, if the circulation is not smooth and you don't feel that everything flows, no matter how good each of the spaces look, they are just pure aesthetics. So a good example would be um, the entrance. The original house has the main door opening up right into the main space. It looks right to the living room, right down to the pool and to the, the pier area. That sort of dilutes the entire experience itself. So what we did was we configured the entire space and turned the original old kitchen into an entrance foyer. That delays the whole experience. Once you move beyond the entrance foyer, you will see the dry kitchen. The dry kitchen area used to be a guest room, in fact. We tore that down and rebuilt it into a dry kitchen which functions both as like a breakfast counter and a bar area as well. Going in from the dry kitchen towards the living and dining room, you will pass by a void space on the left side. You will actually see a side deck that is directly linked to the swimming pool. But the original house was designed in such a way that to access that side deck, you have to go back to the outside at the front of the house and go by the side. When we redesigned that space, we created a bridge that linked in from the corridor going to the living and dining. This allows the, the homeowners to go directly to the pool. I think we saw the living and dining space as the main public area, a formal space where the client would entertain. So, the approach to the design of that space was for it to be as understated as possible, but still remaining as tactile as the way that we approach that modern resort theme. The details that we use in there predominantly is that timber screen detail that wraps around all the walls and the column. The screens on the two sides of the stone wall in fact slides behind the stone wall to reveal an open shelving behind it. It creates a very strong accent within that space, but um, creating the same calm that we wanted to have at the same time. The moment you turn it into the, the entertainment room, you would notice this green moss wall that would just hit you right in the face. And you turn around, then there'll be that TV feature wall, which on its own is also a very, very interesting feature. And opposite of that TV feature wall, then is a stone wall that has a very interesting detail that we created where you could, in fact, hang tea lights on the wall itself, so that the feature wall is no longer just an aesthetic, but yet again has a functional aspect to it as well. In the same consistent theme and design that we did for the rest of the house, we used the screen design um, throughout the entire ma master bedroom as well. But the little details like the, the size of the screen, how it differs from that in the living room is what defines it differently from the rest of the space so you don't get that same design being repeated throughout. They always feel to be of the same DNA, but look different and you understand that each space is unique on its own at the same time. The moment you enter the master bath on the right side is, uh, is the wardrobe, but the way that we designed it, it became like a feature wall. At the center of the bathroom used to be an enclosed courtyard that's open to the sky and you can't really access it, it's like an outdoor space. We took everything that down, designed a feature wall that separated between sort of the dry and the wet side of the bathroom and made that section that's open to the sky an open air shower. 
And one of the interesting things that we did with that void that goes to the roof terrace is to create a green wall that reaches from the master bath up the void and into the roof terrace walls. The sun's bedroom is in fact very different from the rest of the house. The choice of colour then was actually a lighter blonde wood. We created a raised platform that covered over the bay window to increase the amount of space that is, can be used by the occupant. The junior master in the attic, in fact, used to be two different spaces, but we envisioned it to be more of a suite. So what we did was to convert that family room, which used to be very open, and enclosed it, that it becomes more like a lounge serving the junior master suite. Within that same space, um, there's in fact a mono pitch roof that's part of the architecture. If we have retained that, the, the space itself would, felt, would have felt a bit lopsided. So what we did was that we took advantage of that, that slope and created more like a, a four-sided ceiling space that resembles like the roof of a pavilion. And that sort of resonates very nicely with the roof terrace that's just right next to it as well. In my opinion, to be a really good designer, right, you must be able to put that ego on hold. And if there's anything I learned over the years, is that you must listen. And you have to listen very intently to what your clients want.